Sydney owes its riches to plants that lived 200 million years ago. Where the city stands today, there was a huge wetland full of lush vegetation. The climate was cold and damp, so when plants died, they decomposed very slowly. Their remains accumulated on the wet soil and turned into thick layers of peat. Heavy rocks formed on top, generating intense heat and pressure that turned the peat into coal. Millions of years later, it is still here, buried more than half a mile below Sydney. Mining it from this depth is tricky, so today engineers look for coal much closer to the surface. The mine Tony Lang works in has a mere 40 feet of rock sitting on top of the coal. Tony's job is to blow the rock into bits small enough to cart away. It doesn't always go to plan. Some rocks end up a little on the big side. That's bad fragmentation. So when we're talking about uh, fragmentation and productivity, that's one that uh, doesn't uh, improve our productivity. Breaking the rock evenly takes both brute force and precision. Well over 400,000 tons of material covers the six foot thick coal seam. To remove it, Tony drills deep boreholes and fills them with 170 tons of fluid explosives. If he detonated all charges at once, it would send a shock wave into the ground. The blast would pulverize the soft coal and mix it up with the rocks. Instead, Tony detonates the charges one row at a time. That shifts the rock sideways, so each explosion has space to blast into. Less energy goes down into the ground, which protects the precious coal below. 